Happy Halloween once again from Pacific University College of Optometry. I'm Dr. James Kundart and I'd like to give a lesson on how to use the Farnsworth Lantern. And I'm going to be showing both the lantern and the recording form. We won't be using this in lab directly because we need to preserve ours for clinic, but I'd like to show how it should be done for both students and for faculty who might be seeing a patient in our clinics. If you are a patient watching this video, be aware that the random nature of the lantern uh, presentations doesn't make this video uh, cheating in any way. You won't be able to pass the test if you aren't color normal. So you'll need the recording form from the Department of Defense. This includes both the answer key and also the instructions on how to perform the lantern test. I like to point out that on the back of the lantern, bolted to it, are the instructions as well. And what's important to know about the Farnsworth Lantern, people refer to our clinics to take this test when they are when they have failed the pseudo-isochromatic plate test such as the Ishihara that you see here under the proper lighting with the Macbeth easel lamp. So when a patient has failed that test, which is the hardest to pass of the color vision tests, um, Ishihara or HRR or similar, then that means they're, they're sent for the lantern, which allows the mild color deficients to pass, but the moderate and severe folks not to. And we do expect that two thirds of the patients that have failed Ishihara will also um, fail this test. Only the mild ones will get through those who miss a plate or two. How it's administered is there is a button on top that lets the lights light up inside. And you can see there are presentations of red, green, and also white lights in any combination. The brightness is variable, so the lantern is not expected to be at the same brightness for all of these lights. And since there are three colors, and in pairs, three the squared is nine, and there are nine presentations of lights that you can see here. And you want to present them for about the amount of time that I'm showing you now, for two to three seconds, the patient, if they want to see them again, you let go of the button to not burn out the bulb and press it again. The only adjustment you can make on the lantern is the height, and this is done at eight foot test distance with the room lights on. This little thumb screw here allows you to tilt the lantern up or down, and that allows the patient to see it from the exam chair. They can wear the correction for this test, the room lights are on or it becomes a lot easier, and they must not wear any tints, especially on one eye at a time, such as an X-chrome lens, in order to take this test. You'll notice there are no blue-green, uh, or rather, they're green, but no blue-yellow um, lights in the lantern. And if the patient says they see yellow, that's probably white that they're seeing. And they should be told there's only white and red and green. And they should be clear on which ones they see first. So the, you're generally told to start with presentation number one, which is red and green, or presentation number five, which is also red and green, uh, just to calibrate the patient, thus the rules of the test. They're also uh, red on red, as you can see here, uh, green and white in two combinations, and then uh, also just green and green, red and white, and white and white. So those are the combinations that you can have when you present the lantern. There is a shield in the front to keep those numbers, which light up when you press the button, from being visible to the patient as they look inside the lantern. So needless to say, they should not be standing, um, but even if they are, it's, um, they should also have no coaches or anyone else behind them or taking the test. Now the rules for administering this test is you give the first run nine pairs of lights, 18 lights. If the patient makes zero errors, gets all 18 correct in the right order, they pass. You can sign the form for them once you've checked their photo ID to make sure it is really them and that they have no lenses on their eyes. If they get even one of those, one half of one pair incorrect or greater on the first run, then they, they are given two more runs. The first run no longer counts, and it's basically three strikes and you're out. The, uh, the rules say specifically, if any rare errors are made on the first run, give two more complete runs. Average the last two runs. If an average of more than one error per run is made, the examinee has failed. If it's one or less than one, they've passed. And this is a life-changing event for a lot of our patients who have jobs uh, or possible new jobs, like being pilots or boat captains or welding inspectors or that sort of thing hinging on the lantern. Remember, we're, we're looking for the mild color deficient people unless, unless they had a false positive on the Ishihara, that means that they're, they are color deficient, it's just a question of how badly. Uh, there is also on this, on this form, you're to record, by the way, not whether they just got it, or, but exactly what they answer, so you can see where their mistakes are. Someone, for example, who's, uh, who is green color deficient might see green as white. Uh, that's one example for you. So there's a, what's called a vivid red-green test, where uh, it's, it's additional to the lantern. If you have a box of vivid green, vivid red items that cannot be told apart otherwise, such as bike reflectors or, or something else or, or pen light, uh, then you could 
certifying, in addition to the lantern, whether the person can see vivid red and green. The whole test takes a short time to administer, and we often administer it in combination with the 100 hue or with an, uh, an HRR test. And it's good to distinguish when a patient does not pass it, whether they're green deficient, a dutan, or red deficient, a protan. That's the information on the Farnsworth Lantern Test. I hope this has been useful. I'm Dr. James Kundart, and I'm, I'm happy to administer this test to, for, to you if you're a patient or to uh, show you how to use it in clinic if you work with me. Thanks, take care, and I hope to see you. Our Forest Grove Clinic can be reached at 503-352-2020 for an appointment.